All right, looks like everyone's here. Looks like we're live streaming. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to a ChatHQ partnership webinar. Uh, we have Nathan Hirsch here from Outsource School Ecom Balance and Accounts Balance. Uh, he has a uh, vast history of growing and scaling businesses. And today he's going to talk to you about uh, growing and scaling with VAs, as well as um, some things about like accounts, account balance and uh, econ balance. So I'm going to give the floor to him. Uh, and we're going to open up Q&A. You know, at some point, he's got a PowerPoint. He's going to go through some stuff. And then you guys can just fire away and ask questions. Uh, we will also be fielding questions in the Facebook Live if you guys are not here in Zoom. So Nathan, take it away, bro. Yeah, Andrew, thanks for having me on. Can you give me access to uh, share screen? Please? Yes, sir. Let me open that up. All right, you got it. All right. Go. All right. Can you guys see my screen, the presentation? Yes, sir. Awesome. So, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, but this presentation is all about scaling your business with virtual assistants. Uh, I, a lot of people know me as like the, the VA guy, although now I have a few bookkeeping businesses as well. I like to focus on boring, unsexy parts of businesses that, uh, that are required, that you need to master if you want to scale and, and grow. So today I'm going to try to drop as much value as possible. Uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Nathan Hirsch. I post a lot of other content there uh, for you to check out. And Nathan Hirsch, I post a lot of other content. Sorry, there's some background noise. Um, yeah, so quick about me. I was a big e-commerce seller. I sold 25 million from 2008 to 2016 on Amazon. I built the Free Up Marketplace, a competitor to Upwork and Fiverr uh, that was acquired in 2019. The cool thing about that business is we were doing $12 million a year uh, in, in revenue, uh, but we had no US employees. We had no office. We had a team in the Philippines, 30 people that did everything from sales to customer service to bookkeeping you name hey, nathan it. let me pause you for a second man it sounds like there's getting there's some feedback coming in and I'm trying to find who if there's somebody unmuted here um everyone just mute yourself if you don't mind do you do you hear any feedback on your end definitely nathan? yeah okay so if everyone in the room can you please mute yourself uh looks like Ev muted. everyone seems to be muted i even muted myself <laughs> Let me keep going. Let's see if it keeps happening. So, um, yeah, we we had no office, no U.S. employees. We had a team in the Philippines that did everything, uh, stuff you would think like customer service, stuff you wouldn't think like sales um, and onboarding new clients. And, and so after we sold it, we launched Outsource School, which teaches people our unique hiring process and how to avoid some mistakes that we'll talk about today. And more recently in the past year, my partner and I uh, started two monthly bookkeeping services, Ecom Balance and Accounts Balance, uh, doing just charge on the first, books by the 15th each month. Uh, and we have been growing those businesses. And our goal is to grow a portfolio of different businesses that help entrepreneurs. And they're all remote. That uh, The bookkeeping is a hybrid of U.S. and non-U.S., but we have VAs behind everything that, that we do. So happy to kind of answer any questions as we go through this. But today we're going to talk about why hire a VA and some important information to know uh, before you do that, like the different levels, what to delegate first. I got a tool for you guys to figure out your virtual assistant budget. And after that, I'm going to go through each part of the hiring process. So if you think of hiring into four stages, there is interviewing, onboarding, training and managing and you got to master all of them if you want to find good people if you want to keep good people and so we're going to kind of go through each one and i'll kind of let you in on how connor and i do it we've got this process we've been doing for 10 years now that makes it easy fast lets you hire rock stars and most importantly keep them around for for years to, to come so that's what we are going to be going through today does anyone have any questions andrew anything you want to say before we jump into it Oh, I don't know if Andrew's here. Can't hear anyone. Maybe he's muted. Um, all right, I'm going to keep going. Sergio, can you just confirm that you can hear me? I can, yes. And right, cool. uh, Andrew is on mute. He was probably trying to talk. <laughs> all good. Um, cool. So let's talk about the benefits of hiring a VA. So this is why I hire VAs for all my companies. There is less overhead. You don't need an office or a place to, to put people. There's also less HR, less payroll taxes, all of that. So less cost in general. 
You also don't need to hire people full time. Now, to tell you the truth, when I hire VAs, I always hire them full time, exclusive to me uh, long term, because if I'm investing time and energy and money, I want them 100% focused on me and my company. But you don't have to. You can start with five hours a week. You can start project based, 10 hours a month, whatever it is. But you, you have that flexibility. You get access to talent all over the world, not just in your town, but the towns around you, the, the, the states around you, um, but then also just different countries. And you get access to the, top, the best people in the world. You can use time zones to your advantage. A lot of people don't want to hire VAs because, let's say, in the Philippines, it's a completely opposite schedule. I like to make it work for me. I have them work before I wake up. So stuff's done before I even log on to my computer. Uh, for free up, we had 24 seven customer support. I had them work at night when I'm not awake. So you can use those, the, the time zones to your advantage. And if you don't wanna do that, there's plenty of people in the Philippines that are okay working their graveyard shift and working US hours or some kind of hybrid of it where they're on the morning and they log off and they're just working their nights. So that's there. And make your business more sellable. Like I said, I sold the business completely run by VAs. I know a lot of brokers. Um, they would much rather have a great team of VAs and less employees. It's one less obstacle they need to get through during a sale. It makes the business more flexible, um, higher profit margins and all of that. So it's something that looking ahead, it used to be that, oh, you only have VAs. You can't sell this thing. Now people are looking to buy businesses that have great virtual assistant teams. Andrew, anything you want to add there before I keep going? No, you're good. Actually, I was I missed a lot of it because something was going on with my computer. So I was like really fidgeting around to try to get rid of it. But it's clean now, good to go. Um, and I'm back in the game. I want to let everyone know too, uh, we will have a promotional offer at the end. So if you guys want to reach out to Nathan, uh, we will have some uh, links and some offers that are uh, specifically for anyone in this call or anyone watching the replay. So uh, hold your questions about the offer or the or anything like that until the end. Uh, we just want to field questions about um, like the process, VAs, and anything else that Nathan talks about today. Cool. So there are three different levels of hires that you're going to have to make, and you're probably going to have to hire all three as an entrepreneur, and you got to get good at hiring all three. And you got to know what the them, they are and what the use of each of them is, or you're going to hire the wrong level. And most of the mistakes people make when it comes to hiring is just because they're hiring the wrong people for the wrong thing. So you got followers, you got doers, and you got experts. When I say virtual assistants, I'm talking about the followers. They're five to 10 bucks an hour, like the hire from the Philippines. They're there to follow your systems, your processes. You do not want to hire someone and say, go find me leads with no system and no process. That's not going to work out for you. You need to have a standard operating procedure, which we will talk about in a bit. But you're going to get people with experience. Don't hire people that have never been a VA before. They're not going to know if they even like being a VA. Don't hire someone for customer service that's never done customer service before. The best way that, that I can put it in perspective is I used to have this client with FreeUp that did, he sold car parts on eBay and he wanted to hire a customer service rep. So he didn't wanna hire someone and teach them how to do customer service and teach them cars and teach them how to do it this way. He wanted someone who already liked and knew cars, someone who already has five years of customer service experience, and then he was gonna teach them how he wanted customer service done. And that should be your mentality for anything. If you're hiring someone for social media, get someone with lots of social media experience, you need an SOP for to follow. You can get their input, you can make tweaks, you can get feedback, have them take stuff they learned at other companies and apply it, but you need at least a basic standard operating procedure to get started. The doers are your freelancers, graphic designers, writers, uh, website designers. They do the same thing 10 hours a day, they're specialists. You're not teaching them how to be a graphic designer, they're not consulting with you, they're there to do that one thing really well. Now, the beauty of doers is you can build a Rolodex of them and bring them from company to company. When I want a, an infographic done, I don't go on Upwork and post a job and, and start interviewing graphic designers. I already have three graphic designers that I've worked with for five plus years that I can just go to and, and get a project done and, and know that it's gonna get done at a high level. So you wanna build up two or three writers, two or three graphic designers, two or three website web developers. So if your website goes down, you got people who can hit them up. And as you progress as an entrepreneur, you wanna build up this Rolodex. 
Um, usually they're on fixed prices, hourly, non-US, they're in that 10 to 35 range, US, they're in that 25 to, to 50 range, uh, but they're your, your specialists. And unless you're like a video editing agency, uh, hiring full-time video editors, usually they're not full-time um, or exclusive to you. And you can refer them to your friends because you wanna keep them busy so they continue to, to come back for you. Then you got experts. These are coaches, consultants, agencies. They have their own system, their own processes. As an entrepreneur, you cannot master everything. Taking a course, how to do every little thing is a terrible use of your time. Focus on what you're good at. Hire experts for things you're not good at. It can be collaborative. You can work with them and give input. Other experts, they have their way and you either follow it or you don't hire them. So make sure you have that conversation with them up front, but you're gonna have to bring in experts in your business. If you need to run ads, you might hire a Facebook ad expert. This is incredibly important. So make sure you you know the different levels before you make any hire. Make sure you think, what level do I need? Do I need a follower? Do I need a doer? Do I need an expert? And you will run into a lot of issues if you hire for the wrong thing. If you hire a doer and try to train them, if you hire a follower and don't give them directions, if you hire an expert and try to give them a specific task, you're gonna overpay. So make sure you are using the each of the levels correctly. Anyone have any questions or anything uh, they want to add there? I think that sounds good, man. Hey, really quick, Nathan, can you um, give us some, I know I'm backing up here and I don't want to disrupt your presentation, but after you're done, can you give us uh, some of your credentials? I'm, I've always been super impressed by you and Connor, uh, which is one of the reasons I actually became a customer of your guys a couple of years ago. Uh, so when, when everything's said and done, I'd love to hear more about like your businesses and things like that. Uh, and I'm sure some people on the call would as well. Yeah, I think you just missed it. We, uh, I did. Oh, you did. Again. Oh, I did yeah, miss yeah. it. I'm so sorry. Amazon man. seller right. sold free up, run out source goal, econ balance, yeah. uh, all of that. I've never had a, a real job, but if anyone yeah. has any specific <laughs> questions, let me know. You can also connect with me, Nathan Hirsch on LinkedIn, and I, you can kind of hear more of uh, my story there. But um, yeah, I, hopefully we, we kind of gave people the overview. Cool. Yeah, we, Thanks, we do have a question in the chat. Um, Jason yeah, has right. asked it a, a couple of times. Uh, he says, what, what was the bookkeeping company's name? And sorry, I don't have the chat open. So if I miss your question, someone's got to read the questions to me. No, it's okay. I, I, I will. Don't worry. Hey, Serge, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to hold questions to the end, though. So let's just get through the presentation. And then, uh, uh, okay. and then we'll, well they just then we'll save questions. To uh, oh, OK. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, so answer, I'll answer questions as you go if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay, so Jason cool. wants it's to a, know what was a bookkeeping company's name? Accountsbalance.com, exactly how it's spelt. Um, and if if you mention this presentation, you get two months free of bookkeeping. Hmm. There you go, folks. Cool. Any other questions before I keep going? He says thanks, and we're good to go. Cool. All right. These are two lists that you should create as an entrepreneur. And we're constantly tweaking, adding to this list and delegating from this list. First of all, is everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You're gonna prioritize this list from easiest to hardest. And that is what you are hiring virtual assistants for to get your time back. Because as you go, that list is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until you do not have enough time in the day, week or month, and you're gonna burn yourself out. So the, the stuff you know how to do, the stuff that you're doing every day, Easiest to hardest, that's where you start hiring the followers for, the virtual assistants for. And you want to start with easier tasks, things that if they mess up, it doesn't affect your business. A good one is um, in outsource school, we have this popular uh, SOP because we give people all our SOPs in outsource school called the podcast outreach formula. If you want to go on podcasts, like I've been on 700 plus podcasts, hiring a VA to pitch you on podcasts, following our systems is a pretty good place to start. Worst case scenario, they don't get you on any podcasts. You'll be fine. You'll live. You'll improve. You'll learn something from that experience. And that'll help you down the line when you delegate something more important like customer service or you need it to get done right or your business might suffer. So prioritize the list, easiest to hardest, chip away at the easiest stuff first, learn a lot, build some trust, find some good VAs, and then you can start delegating harder and harder. The second list is all the things your business needs that you need to find people for because you're not good at it. And it, like an easy example is I'm not good at building websites. I'm not good at SEO. My business partner is, so, but we have that covered. So I'm not doing it. My partner's doing it. I don't need to hire for it, but Facebook ads, neither of us are good at. If I want to run Facebook ads, I'm hiring an expert to come in and do that. 
If I need to do graphic design, neither of us do graphic design and it's a terrible use of our time if we did. So we hire a graphic designer to do it. So create a list of all the things that your business needs or will need, and then you can prioritize that and what's most important, what needs to be done this week, this month, and that's where you're gonna be hiring the doers and the experts for. I also have a VA calculator for you guys. If you go to outdoorschool.com slash VA calculator, it's gonna spit out how many VAs you can afford right now, depending on how your business is doing. Remember, you don't have to hire them full-time, so it'll show you part-time, full time, you can kind of tweak it for how aggressive or how conservative that you want to be. Um, but definitely check this out. Does anyone have any questions on the different levels or the two lists uh, before I, I keep going into the, the more juicy stuff? It doesn't look like we have any questions right now. I'm having people post all their questions in the chat. Um, and then, uh, you know, if there's anything that's like bigger, we can push it to Q&A at the end. Sounds good. So as I mentioned, there are four parts to the interview or to the hiring process. You got interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing, and entrepreneurs are known for messing up some of these parts. So I'm gonna kind of go through a lot of the mistakes that people make. We will start with interviewing. So we like acronyms at Outsource School. So the first acronym is CARE. Uh, communication, attitude, experience, and red flags. Um, most people, they just try to interview for skill. What experience do you have? How good are you at this? Blah, blah, blah. That is one part of the equation. You want to hire people that have all three of these. They got to have the experience you want because we don't hire newbies. We don't want to train someone that has never done what I'm hiring them for before. But they also have to right, have the right attitude. They can't just care about money. People that care about money, there's always going to be something that someone out there that can pay more money than you can. So if they're the only thing they care about is money, that is very tough to work with that kind of person. Now, the attitude that we're looking for might be growth. It might be they want to be a team leader in the future. They they like learning. They like being a part of a team. They like stability. We want people with the right attitude. And then communication, we want people who speak English, people that get on the same page very quickly. If I'm doing a Slack interview, which is something we teach at Outsource School because it's very fast and efficient, and most of the time you're not doing phone calls and Zoom calls with VAs, um, we want to know, are they going to respond quickly? Because if they're, if they're taking forever to write out a Slack message back to answer your interview question, guess what's going to happen when you go on Slack with them and trying to talk to them during the day? They're probably going to take forever to respond there too. Can you understand what they're saying? Are they answering your questions directly? Are they communicating with you in a style that works for you? So a lot of people, when they interview, look for the right answers. I once took a college class on how to interview. It didn't necessarily teach me how to do any job very well. It just taught me how to bullshit interview questions. Look for the wrong answers. Look for the red flags. What is this person telling me that says they don't have the experience they think that I think they have, that they don't have the experience that I want them to have, they don't have the attitude that's right for my company, or they can't communicate with me in a method that's going to work. And if the red flag pops up, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to hire them. Now, it could. Like, if you start talking to them and you realize, man, I can't understand a word this person's saying, that's a, a pretty quick red flag to maybe end the interview and find someone else. Um, but it, it could just mean that you need to dig more. If the person says, hey, what, what's most important to me is my, my family, and that doesn't really have anything to work, maybe you dig deeper. What does that mean? And it doesn't necessarily mean it's a red flag. It just means that you have to fall, ask follow-up questions to really understand what is this person's attitude, what is their experience, what is their communication style. Um, the other thing to, to kind of keep in mind there, lost my train of thought. Uh, da, 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 what was I going to say? Oh, you can end interviews early. So if, you, if, you're, if an interview is 40 minutes, um, and you realize pretty early on it's a red flag, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but hey man, I don't think it's the right fit. I wanna value your time. I'm gonna interview other people. And you don't have to just stick there for the rest of the interview, value your time at the highest possible level always. So that is the care interview process. If you want the exact interview questions, you can grab it at Outsource School, but make sure that your that your entire interview is, is based around finding that trifecta, not one out of three, not two out of three, but communication, attitude, and experience, and the entire time you're looking for red flags. Hey, Nathan, that's actually a great point that you brought up is valuing your time. I think a lot of people, especially in the high-level um, ecosystem, they're like just starting off, they're just starting to like build their agency and doing sales themselves and things like that. 
they tend to not remember that, right? Like going into an interview, going into a sales meeting, like you're always the first and foremost thing is like valuing each other's time. That's why some of the best salesmen uh, you, you talk to, they're like, hey, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I want to value your time, value my time. It's the same thing with an interview, right? Like, sure, you want to be friends, but you, you need to make sure that you're not spending an hour with somebody that you're probably not going to hire where you can spend another 30 or 40 minutes with other hires or something like that. Right. I mean, I was told my whole life that I talk too fast, which is probably true, but I think in business, it's super helpful. If I'm, if I'm doing a sales call with a customer, I want to answer their questions and be friendly and show them that we're going to do it. But if I can do that in a short period of time, so they can go do other stuff and they can feel like, Hey, every time I talk to Nate, it's not going to drag on for an hour. I think that's a good thing. And hopefully yeah. you got, hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys, but if I can give you the information in a way that's quick and efficient and lets you guys go on with your day and grow your business to me, that that's what I want when I get on the phone with someone. So I try to, to replicate that. Well, cool thing about this call is we do have uh, fathom recording. So if anyone doesn't know what fathom is, you will get a recording link. Um, so you watch the, the replay. We're going to post the YouTube, Facebook, uh, it'll create a summary with like AI generated notes and things like that. So uh, don't don't feel bad about talking too fast. I'm the same way. And if anyone misses something, uh, we promise we will be able to get you uh, replays and summaries and all that fun stuff at the end. So cool. All right. Let's talk about what most entrepreneurs mess up, and that is the onboarding process. So let's say you have an interview with someone. They check all the boxes, communication, attitude, experience, and you want to hire them. Before you get, before they start on day one, you want to have a call with them or a Slack with them, a Slack conversation with them where you do onboarding and you go through expectations. You want to be on the same page with them. You do not want to train them for a month and then realize that you're not on the same page with someone. That's going to waste a lot of time, a lot of effort. And 90% plus of the issues that people have with virtual assistants are because they didn't actually set expectations or onboard them. So the first thing you want to go over them is their rate. Whatever you're going to pay them, make sure they're actually happy with that. Double check with them. The last thing you want to do is have them just take a job because they need it now and they're going to ditch you for the first second. They get a higher paying job because they think they're worth seven and you are going to pay them six. This is a conversation you want to have with them. Really make sure they're good with the rate. What about bonuses and raises? How often do you give bonuses and raises? We break it down our process in outdoor school, but whatever yours is, let them know. Maybe they're expecting a bonus every quarter and you don't know that until you talk to them. Maybe they're expecting to go from five to 10 in one year and you weren't expecting to do that. And that's just going to blow up in your face down the line. Hey, tell them every six months, every year, I give a raise every quarter, every half year, I give a bonus, whatever your process is, let them know up front and make sure they are good with that. And if they're not good with that, they can either back out or you can discuss with them, see if you can get on the same page with them. So that's incredibly important. Then we get into what I call SICK. Again, we like acronyms. S-I-C-C. So that's Schedule Issues Communication Culture. And we're going to talk about all four of these briefly with the virtual assistant. The schedule that you need from them. Make sure that's ironclad. Make sure they've worked it before. I can't tell you how many people I've seen hire a VA for the graveyard shift and the VA thinks they can do it, but they've never actually done it before. And working throughout the night does not work for their health, for their family. And they quit on the person after a month when if I'm doing it, hey, have you ever worked graveyard before? Why do you think you know how to do it? What concerns do you have? I have this conversation with them up front. And I even let them know, hey, this job is only graveyard shift. So if you can't do it and down the line can't do it, we're not gonna be able to work together. Or the opposite, hey, I know the schedule is graveyard shift, but I can be a little bit flexible. Why don't we try to work together to create a schedule that works for you? Issues, there's four types of common VA issues, power outages, internet outages, personal issues, and computer issues. You're going to go through it with them. If they lose power, are they just not going to be able to work until power comes back? Or do they have a backup place they can work? Do they have a backup laptop? Or if their laptop breaks, they can't afford a new laptop and you're not going to have a VA for a month. Are they the only one taking care of a sick relative where if something happens to that relative, they're, they're going to have to spend two weeks in the hospital and not work with you? Or do they have brother and sisters that can help with that? So it's not all on them. You want to go through these issues and make up 
that and make sure it's clear to the VA you do not work with virtual assistants that have these issues that interfere with work. Obviously, if they need a day off, they need 48 hours, they need a week off here and there, whatever, that's fine. But I really set the expectation that they have to have backups for all of these. Just because you lose power does not mean you can't work for two weeks. It means you go someplace with power that you can work. So we go through that. We go over communication. Everyone uses email, Slack, Zoom in a different way. What's expected of them? There are VAs that hate being on phone calls. If you're having four hours of phone calls with a VA every day, they are going to hate that job very quickly. You wanna let them know what they're getting into. Go over how your company communicates and how they're going to be expected to communicate with you. And then go over the culture of your business. Is it cutthroat? Is it a family? Is it teamwork? Is everyone working apart? You wanna go over it with them because culture cancers are just destroy your company and everyone wants a different thing there. Now, when you're done with onboarding, you wanna make sure that you give them a chance to back out. You would much rather they back out and say, now that we've gone through the expectations, I don't think I'm a good fit for this role. It might suck at the time, but that is way, 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 way better than you working with this person for two months and then them realizing it's not a fit. So this, this is a 20 minute conversation. You can go through with them and this is gonna save you hours of time, thousands of dollars down the line. Make sure that you go through the onboarding with the virtual assistant. Does anyone have any questions here? We have a couple in the chat, but let's wait till Q and A if if you if, if that's okay. You got it. We'll wait till the end. Cool. So training, and we talked about this a little bit. You want to value your time at the highest level. The way that you do that is by not doing one-on-one -on -one trainings with every virtual assistant. You want to create an SOP. SOPs are standard standard operating procedures. A good format for them is the why. Why are you doing this task? What are the goals? What does success and failure look like? Don't assume they know these things. Put these in the top of your SOP. Then you've got the steps, the one, two, three, four, five. Keep it basic. Keep it simple. You can always add to it. If a VA is confused over something, you can always edit your SOP and clarify it. But get those basic steps in there. And then this is the one that everyone forgets, the important reminders or the do not do list. What if you, let's say someone's doing customer service for your business. You have one really big client that only wants to talk to you. Put in there, hey, if this client emails me, do not respond to this client, always come and get me. That's it, put that reminder in there. Now, you're gonna give them the SOP and you're gonna have them go through it. You're gonna have them read it, you're gonna have them ask questions and then you're gonna quiz them on it. This is how it saves your time. If they don't understand the SOP, it's either two things. One, you need to make your SOP better, or two, they're probably not a good fit for this role. The last thing you wanna do is spend an hour doing one-on-one -on -one training with them, although you could record it and show it to someone later, but one-on-one -on -one training just takes a lot of time, and then realize they're not good at it and you just waste an hour of your time. Have them prove that they can learn the SOP without you, and once they prove that, then you can dive into more one-on-one -on -one or personalized training or make the SOP better. Put the onus on their time, not your time, and that's going to really help you train people and be efficient going forward. Now, the last thing I have here, remember we're going through interviewing, which is care, onboarding, which is sick, um, training, which is all about SOPs, and managing is our funny BARF methods. That's the acronym that we use. And this is how you reduce turnover. Turnover kills small businesses. It will absolutely crush you. It is expensive. It is time consuming. It is frustrating. It'll make you not want to hire people, which is not good for anyone. And you need to keep people around. The same people we hired in day one of free up. These are people that were with us four years later and that we sold when we sold free up are still with free up. You want to keep people around. You're investing lots of time and energy and training in them. And I already mentioned paying people well is not good enough. Anyone can find a higher paying job if they really put their mind to it. I truly believe that. You will not be able to compete with other companies on money. And there's plenty of companies just way bigger than you that can pay people more than you can. The way that you keep people around is by getting them to buy in. That means sharing the goals of the company, celebrating wins with them, letting them know when things aren't going well. Don't just say, here's one task you're doing. I'm not giving you any other information. Do this only task and let me know when it's done. Make them feel a part of the company. Make them let them know how their job is impacting your company. Secretly, that's what people want. They want to feel a part of something. They want to treat the company as their own. Appreciate that. So many entrepreneurs hire a VA and they only talk to them when that VA does something wrong. 
Let them know when they're doing something good. If you have a, a team leader or you have an all hands meeting with all your VAs every Monday, which I recommend and we teach you how to do in outdoor school, we give shout outs. Hey, Bob over here did a great job with this. Give him recognition. People like that. It, it builds morale. Other people are going to want that. So show appreciation. Build a relationship with them. Get to know them, their family. Should share about you. Like I'm having a, a kid in late August. Everyone on my team knows it. Like don't just be their boss. Be someone they can relate to and, and really get to know them on a personal level. And the last one is most important. Build a family inside of your company. You want them to like each other, sponsor meetups in the Philippines. It could be virtual meetups, virtual happy hours we teach you how to do. This stuff is so small. It's so easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. And you're going to get them to like each other and get to know each other. When people are part of a family, they don't want to leave that family. And that's how you're going to keep people around. So that is my BARF method, buying in, appreciation, relationship, and family, and is the key to reducing turnover. So real quick, and then I'll kind of get to questions. Some things we didn't cover that are all parts of outdoor school, the exact interviewing and onboarding questions, our SIP method, um, our meetings format, which is super important, especially one-on-one -on -one meetings and how to run those effectively, um, our SOP templates and all of our SOPs, and what happens if things go wrong, how to turn someone around or how to fire them and, and keep your business safe. So outdoor school is our, our yearly membership. It is a course that's called Cracking the VA Code, which is all of our hiring process questions, videos as, videos of us interviewing um, virtual assistants. You get access to all of our SOPs, uh, customer service SOPs, getting on podcasts, all of that stuff. You get our Facebook group that has monthly coaching calls and a great community there. And we have a Care Plus program where we'll actually interview a virtual assistant for you and you can watch us do it. You can benefit from it. Um, so that is there as well. I've got some reviews here, uh, Natalie and, and a lot. Um, they, they're just crushing out to our school using our SOPs. I won't spend um, too much time here. We're, we're all about guarantees. If you're not happy, we don't want your money, 30 day money back guaranteed. And we actually have two promotions for you. Um, this one, which is for anyone watching the replay, Upscale 30, which gets you 30% off Outdoor School if you go to OutdoorSchool.com. But we're actually running a Father's Day promo that ends tomorrow at midnight if you're watching live, which is 40% off. And if you go to OutdoorSchool.com, that coupon is on top of the site, but that is just uh, through tomorrow. So, um, yeah, thanks for having me. Hopefully I was able to add value and happy to stick around and answer any questions you guys have. Yeah, man. No, that was fantastic. Um, um, we have some questions here. Uh, let's see. I think Sergio, you asked the first question. You said, what if I'm not sure, uh, what if I'm not sure what I should be outsourcing? Uh, yes. Yeah. Hold on. Partners. Or I, uh, can you let me turn my video on and, you know, anybody. Oh, yeah. I got to enable watch. that, don't I? Yeah. Um, so this is, this is one I've had asked, uh, um, like people have asked me, this a bunch of times um and some of my other partners have had this this question and it's okay let's say i understand that va said a really powerful tool that i can use um but what if i am not ready to outsource how do i get how do agency owners get in a mindset where they know the value that they're getting um, before they can put any of this into practice? Do you have uh, resources for that? We definitely have resources for that. Um, first of all, if you go to outsourceschool.com, you can book a call with my Rockstar VA, and she's awesome. And you can see what an A-plus VA actually looks like. And I think that'll give you a lot of confidence and just say, man, if I had this in my business, that would really help me. I can also share a quick story. Uh, back in my day, I was kind of in your boat, and most entrepreneurs are, where I didn't want to delegate. And I, this was very early on. So my, my parents said I should probably pay taxes. So I met with an accountant. And the first question he asked me was, when probably. are you going to hire your, your first person? And I shrugged off. I said, why would I hire other people? They're going to steal my ideas. They're going to hurt my business. It's going to cost me money. I can do this seven days a week forever. And this accountant laughed in my face and said, you're going to learn uh, this lesson on your own. And sure enough, I get to, I'm get i selling an e-commerce. So I get to my first busy season, November, December. Everyone's buying product. And I just get destroyed. I'm working 20 hours a day. Social life's gone. I was in college. My grades go down. And I work my butt off for six weeks to survive and keep this business alive. And when I get to January, I think, man, 
I learned a very valuable lesson here. I need to start hiring people. So it's kind of one way or the other, either you're going to hire too early or too late. And if you learn too late, it's a hard lesson to learn. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to, it's the, everything, the emphasis on hiring is going to be coming way more important. If you do it early, you have a lot more flexibility to make mistakes, to learn lessons, and you're going to be happy down the line you did it. So those are kind of your two options. And I would strongly encourage you to, to start doing it. The other thing I would add is there's just very few seven, eight figure solo entrepreneurs out there. Like if you want to grow your business, you're going to have to learn how to hire. There's no way around it. There's very few companies that, that get around it. So it, it's just a necessary thing in your business. And being good at hiring makes everything else easier and better. Problems come up as an entrepreneur. Issues come up. If someone hacks your website and you have a website doer in your Rolodex, it's a lot less stressful. You know exactly who to go to for what. So learning how to hire early on makes everything else easier. And I, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that after I convinced them to delegate, they came back and said, man, I don't know what I did before this. This was great. My life's so much better. My, my life's so much easier. So um, I don't know if that helps. I'm not like a business coach or anything to like change people's mentality, but that's mm. my experience. Yeah, here's from my experience. Even if you are a solo founder and you're, you feel like you have everything under control and you can do it all, or you feel like you're not making enough money to, to the point where it doesn't hurt <laughs> to, to hire somebody and, and pay them to do things. Um, like for example, uh, people who are often in this situation are people who think of their agency or their business as as a uh, lifestyle business, right? Um, I just don't want to have a boss and I want to, I can do most things myself or everything myself. Um, especially if you're in that scenario, hiring a VA or hiring somebody to take stuff off your plate gives you back time, right? So I think, yeah. I think that's, yeah, uh, there, there you go. Um, VA calculator. Yeah. The only thing I'll um, add is, Start with five hours a week. Find one task you can hire someone for five hours a week. It is going to be super addicting and it's going to yeah. make you want to do more. Yeah, actually, funny that you mentioned that search because I, I mean, I built a six figure business by myself, no VAs, no nothing. But at some point, I had to outsource work. Like I just used uh, like white label, you know, companies and things like that. I could have hired a team and done that stuff like that. But eventually, I got to a point even with that where I had somebody, I hired a VA just to do blog uh like repurposing so we were like repurposing reselling blogs like things like that but just that one task that's all he did every single day every single week that's all he did so it was a fantastic hire and it actually put like i don't know like 120 percent roi in my pocket from what i was paying him to what i was charging the cu customer for that specific task so yeah it's like even for lifestyle businesses it, it becomes a necessity when you start to say like what am i offering and like how much time can i spend doing this thing right Right. Cool. Um, good um, yeah. Next one we have is Clockify or what other software to use for tracking hours. I'm going to add some to that too, Nathan. Like, uh, how do you manage? And this this is actually me asking too, as a business owner. Uh, how do you manage um, people across the world? I know some people have other tech, like certain techniques where they jump on Zoom all day, and I I would never do that. It's absolutely insane. Um, but like, how do you manage time? How do you manage responsibility and uh, accountability of VAs, uh, especially halfway across the world? You know, people have other things going on. So if you want to touch on that. Um, I actually use Clockify. I think it's a good tool nice. and app. If you want to go a step above Time Doctor, um, I personally don't like 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 um, having to to record everyone's screens like first of all i don't have time to go through that and second of all i think it yeah. doesn't build a lot of trust uh with virtual mm -hmm. assistants and i want to build trust and it doesn't take me very long to realize if someone's not doing what they shouldn't do um if you are going to use time doctor do it early on talk about that during the onboarding um we've had clients in the past that um they hire all these VAs and then six months later, they say, by the way, we're implementing Time Doctor. We're going to record all your screens. And the VAs are like, wait a second, what? I never agreed to this. I would not have taken this job if you had told me that. And that leads to a big issue. Um, so if you're going to go a step above that, make sure it's clear up front and the VA agrees to that. Um, but I personally have never done it and I've built pretty big VA teams. 
Um, some of the questions about outsource school and time, um, it, <laughs> we design it so it's very quick and easy to implement. And even if you just grab our PDFs with interview questions, that alone is probably worth it. Um, I don't personally do coaching. That's not something I do, but we do have a great team of VAs that are there to uh, hold your hand and answer your questions along the process. And like I mentioned, if you're part of Astro School, we have a Care Plus where we'll actually interview uh, VAs yep. for you. So I was just going to say, see, that might be the the answer there is for C, he, he wants to know if you have like a hands-on approach. If you do, if you go into outsource school, that Care Plus program is probably going to fit what you need, C, um, because they will interview and they'll help you kind of go through that whole process without you having to like master the entire educational course. Right. right. And a lot of it, like the crack in the VA code is very straightforward. This is how we interview onboard, train and manage. We're, like that shouldn't take you very long to implement. And then you get all of our SOPs and you can just pick or choose which ones you want. You might want to go on podcasts, grab that SOP. You might never want to go on a podcast in your life, skip that SOP, grab the lead generation one. So all that other stuff is just extra and you can just pick and choose what you want to do. Right. Uh, we have another one here from Jason. How much time do you typically take to onboard a VA? Is it over a week, two weeks, a month? Yeah, I mean, part of what you got to figure out as an entrepreneur is how do you onboard someone in as short as time as possible? You don't want it to take six months for you to figure out if someone's a good fit, if they can do it for your business. And it is very, very like role specific. Like customer service takes longer to onboard than a lead generation VA that you can onboard in like a day or so. So your goal is to get that time as quick down as quick as possible. Now you're actually talking about like training and getting them going. When I was saying onboarding, I'm talking about setting expectations. That's a very quick meeting. Um, but if you're talking about like, how do you, how long do you take to train them and, and teach them the ways and, and get them going? It's all about shorting that. And over time, it's uh, you're going to learn how to get that sh shorter and shorter. And kind of like I talked about, make it take up their time and not your time. And you do that by giving them videos, giving them SOPs, testing them, making sure that they know what they're doing and, and trying to get that process as short as possible. Awesome. Um, cool. So it doesn't look like we have any more questions. Um, if anyone wants to throw a quick question there uh, right now, if I, not, I, I do ahead, have search. one. Yeah, yeah, I do sorry. have one. So uh, before you talked about followers and um, doers and experts, right? So people who are following instructions and following SOP because you're do having them do like a task level type of thing. But then you also talked about how you can help people find or how you would uh, advise people would build a Rolodex of experts and, and go to um, BAs or uh, contractors. So I, I think for someone who's just following an SOP, Time tracking would be probably the best. Um, what about someone who is doing one specific thing that is very high leverage and very important to you? How do you have tools around that? Do you have uh, advice for, for people in uh, taking out sort of school? How to evaluate, hey, is this working out for me? Yeah, I mean, a lot of like we've got SOPs for hiring graphic designers, for hiring video mm -hmm. editors, and a lot of it is around like setting up milestones. Like, let's say that you, hire someone to build your website and your website is 10 pages. You're not just saying, go build my website, go build 10 pages and then I'll look at it. You're saying, build me one page, let me look at it, give feedback. Have you proved to, yourself, proved to me that you can take feedback and adjust to what I'm doing? Um, and, and then I'll have you build two more pages and then give me feedback. So it's all kind of broken down like that. And I mean, there's tools on Upwork like escrow and things like that. Usually there's not um, time tracking. Um, Jason says, do you offer any recommendations for VA services or special deals with any of them? I understand you don't source directly. You train agencies how to do this thing themselves. Is that right? Yeah. So we do have a part directory as part of Outsource School. Um, free ups in there. There's VA Staffer. There's onlinejobs.ph, Upwork, Fiverr. Like those are the main ones to use. And we're always looking for good ones to add to our directory. And if any members have ones that they refer, um, we'll, we get them added there. So we do point in the right direction and we do have like deals with them. I think with free up, you get like a, if you're an outdoor school member, you get like a $50 credit to try a VA. There's a few things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but like, I don't provide VAs anymore. I'm, I'm out of that game. Awesome. Uh, Jason, cool. hopefully that, that answers your question. The GHL Academy. Yeah, Marie. So, um, 
So that's um, Stephanie Blair's program. Right. She, de she developed it before she uh, they um, made a partnership with Extendly, but they do have a um, directory of what they call, I think it's automation architects or whatever they've named it. Um, but there is a directory of VAs there and they're experts. And those right. would be people who are specifically trained for high level, but you can right. go much further than just people trained on high level, right? So we're talking about someone to do video creation for you or someone to do um, like many other things, right? What's right. So that's yeah. a great resource. Uh, definitely uh, look at these other uh, things that Nathan is mentioning and Outsource School is, is a great resource to go and learn how, how do you go about it? Like is it for you, if it is for you, then you know what's the best way to do it? Yeah, I think a good rule of thumb is is um, you got to think: Are you getting a high level VA, or are you getting a VA that eventually you may need to hire and like move into high level, right? Because again, this uh, like Chase Q has affiliations with high level, and like we have integrations, but like there's so much more out there than just high level, right? So like yeah. Sergio was saying, video creation stuff like that, blog creation. So uh, yeah. GHL Academy or, or uh, Melissa and Stephanie Blair have a great resource, but um, again, you will probably have to train those VAs in other things if you mm -hmm. don't find a VA specific in the tasks that you really need them, and then vice versa. If you go to free up or out, you know, um, Upwork or something like that, and you get a VA and you need them to do high level, then you're going to have to train them in high level. So there's kind of like a middle ground that you have to find there. Um, but yeah. Uh, we got a couple more questions, and guys, we're running out of time here. We got six minutes, so we're going to try to get to all these questions as soon as possible. Um, oh, it looks like Nathan, you've kind of been um, answering some of these questions. Yeah, uh, someone asked if we provide guys. pricing. So we actually give you job templates for the most common jobs um, that all have pricing in it. You can obviously tweak that and make it your own, but it saves you a lot of time to writing job posts and also lets you know what things should cost. Cool. Awesome. Man, Greg, join right when we're right when we're ending, man. Um, I know. So, my bad. No, but it's at okay. least we, we get to meet. We yeah, talk back hey. and forth, but I'm not get to meet you before. <laughs> we uh we will have a replay though, so we're gonna send out a link, uh, Fathom link to everyone that joined. Uh, so it'll be a yeah. replay video, the uh, summary, AI generated notes, all that fun stuff. Uh, we will be posting on YouTube, Facebook, and then we'll also have a blog post that uh, profiles Nathan and Connor in Outsource School. Uh, okay. And then if you guys want, we do have partnership links, so you're gonna get um two free months of either Econ Balance or Accounts Balance, which is Nathan and Connor's uh, bookkeeping company. So if you're a marketing agency, which most of you are, you go to Accounts Balance. Uh, if you're an e-commerce company, you go to Econ Balance, uh, but using the Chat Issue link, you're gonna get two months free. And then uh, we also have an affiliate link that gets you a 30% discount uh, if you um, showed up to this call or if you're watching the replay. So yeah, so those are um, the resources here at the end and everyone just keep a lookout for the replay in your email or on the ChatGPT community. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up here. It looks like all the questions are just about done. Um, Nathan, I wanna thank you so much, man. You're the first ChatGPT partner uh, webinar that we've done and you killed it. Uh, I think you gave a ton of value to, the, to everyone that watched and, and everyone that's gonna be watching the replay. Uh, and like I said, I was a customer of yours a couple of years ago. I learned an absolute ton about hiring VAs and just like where I could leverage um, other people in my business and, and scale. So I want to thank you for that. And I'm excited to see where this goes and, and see how many people can can utilize your, your uh, you know, businesses and, and see if they can help scale their companies as well. Awesome. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Thanks, man. See you, everyone. Andrew. Here. Question. What's up? Here, uh, hey, actually, reach on. out to me. Reach out to me on Facebook. We're gonna end this. Uh, we're on live and everything right now. That 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 was the goal. I want to reach out to you because I've got another idea for another partnership, maybe for you. Yeah, man.